Our first guest tonight is a uh, talented actor, producer, and punisher, too. You can see him now with a big mustache and little shorts as coach to Venus and Serena Williams in the new movie King Richard with Will Smith. Do you think I'm ready? No, I know you're ready. OK, well, you talk to my dad. <sighs> Sweetheart, look. Come on, Rick, please. You're trying to feed me to the I'm wolves ready. here. I you can't. I just, look, I've been Rick, down this road. just talk to him. Please. Please? Raider, 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 Raider. Is that no. a yes? It's that face. It's your face. It's like I can't. So, yes. Well, give me the face. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right, all yes. right, all right. Oh, boy, here we go. King Richard is in theaters and on HBO Max now. Please welcome John Bernthal. You too, man. You were so good in this movie, by the way. Really good. I yeah. appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you saying that. Happy birthday, by the way, and thank you. Oh guys. yeah, happy <laughs> birthday, in there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you play a guy, a real guy named Rick Macy. Who yeah, he's a, real. A tennis coach, and is he really like that? Uh, you know, he is really like that. Uh -huh. He is really like that. And uh, you know, look, I, I think for me, this this movie. You know, it's about uh, parenthood and, and fatherhood and sports. And uh, I don't know, I just, I really wanted to be a part of this one. I'm, 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 I'm really proud of it. You that. found out about this part and you said, because you don't, you, usually you're beating people up in, in things, right? I mean, <laughs> typically you're beating people up, but you beat no one up in this movie. I beat no one up in this. No, 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 <laughs> definitely not. I, I, no, this was something that um, I, I really went after. I, I, you know, I don't think too many people sort of saw me for that part, but uh, it's something I, I, I fought for. Uh, I didn't beat anybody up for it, but I definitely fought yeah, for it. Yeah, no, me. you didn't have to. Yeah. Did you grow the mustache? That's my mustache, man. For that the... is my mustache. Yeah. And not like that, thank you, thank you. And not like that, man, not like that. I kept that, we got shut down for six months, and I kept that mustache. <laughs> oh, really? My kids, man, little Billy Bernthal would tug on that mustache every, my wife did not make out with me for six months, but I believe <laughs> in the spirit of this film so much. I mean, I took so much crap for that mustache. Were you hey. worried you couldn't grow it back or you just didn't know when it would I just would... believed in the movie, man. I see. You know what I mean? It's dedication. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Will Smith plays uh, Richard Williams, uh, dad to Venus and Serena. And this crazy true story, I mean, it's a true yeah. story. It's very hard to believe, but yeah. it's quite true, obviously. Everyone says he's the most fun guy to work with. Yeah, Is he I... the most fun guy to work like, with? I can't say enough good about Will. You know, I mean, he's... he's, he's... Would you say otherwise? if he was terrible. I kind of, you know, I, I would just sort of couch it in another way. Okay. You know what I mean? I would kind of go underhanded with it. But here's what I'll tell you about Will that a lot of people don't know. He's a bad man, dude. Not only is he, he's super generous, he's unbelievably kind, he's got this undeniable spirit, um, but he's a bad man. And, and, and he, I, I'll tell you why. Now look, I don't have very many vices anymore but one thing that I do do is uh, I drive super dang fast, man. Like super oh, dang fast. Like and how so, fast? Like fast. Okay. And, 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 and I'll tell you, I, I drive myself to work, and we were shooting down in Anaheim, and I knew both Will and I had about a two-hour drive home, and I know he drives. And we were talking about the drive, and we were doing our thing, and I said, look, Will, I drive real fast, man. You know, I go about 110 miles an hour, like, the whole way. It's four in the morning, there's nobody on the road, and I hightail it. I got to get home to my kids, right? And so he goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I, I get it, man. I'm, I'm up usually around 150, 160. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, man, you're Will Smith, dude. Like, you already <laughs> got it all, man. You don't, like, I've never seen him be boastful. I've never saw him be arrogant. I never, like, what are you doing, dude? I got one thing, I drive fast. You don't need to have this, too. Like, you, you, like, there's no way you're doing 150. <laughs> and sure enough, man, I'm in my Ford Raptor, and I've got it going as good as that thing will go. And I'm hightailing it home on the 101, and I look in my side view mirror and I see something moving in a way that no vehicle should ever move. It was just like, it, it was, it just, shoom, just zoomed past me. And I was like, could that be? And I looked at it, I said, that's not Will's car. But then I looked back in the rear view mirror again and I saw something coming that literally made it feel like I was standing still. And this thing just, wow, wow, and that was Will. And the next day, I'm like, dude, you really do drive that fast. Like, what are you doing? And I found out the first car was his security car that makes sure everything's safe up along the way. And then he's, <laughs> he's got a scout. Up. He's got a, a pace car. He's a bad man. 
<laughs> oh my God. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, drive slower. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. And he's like, a national treasure anyway. Really he is, shouldn't man. be driving that fast. He really is. But for some reason, it just feels safe when he's doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just feels correct. I right. know what you mean. I yeah. know what you mean. There are certain people that you just feel like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. 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 You see, so had you played a lot of tennis before this movie? You know, I hadn't really played uh, much tennis at all. You know, I, 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 I lost a ton of weight for this one. I, I trained a ton in tennis. I grew my own mustache. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I got to train. I got to train in a place called the Wheel Tennis Academy over in Ojai, California, where I live. And I got to train uh, a top 50 junior nationalist player named Kamea Medora. She was awesome. And I you actually, trained her? Yeah, I got to train her. I learned how to, you know, to feed and run drills. And she had to deal with that, that, that accent and me sort of training in character. Um, and she actually, uh, she actually played a part uh, in the movie as the cheating girl. And she called me afterwards and said, hey, can oh, yeah. you help me get an agent? You know, oh, is that right? I'm like, dude, stick to tennis. You're amazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I did. So, so you're, you're hitting the ball to her and volleying right. and all that's that right. stuff? Right. Yeah. yeah. And did, did her ranking drop at that time <laughs> after you? <laughs> Are you coach, do you coach your boys in? So you know, I'm very involved with my kids in sports, sort of period. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, look, my son, Bill, the same guy who would pull on my mustache. Yeah. You know, he kind of feels himself. He plays travel baseball. He's eight. He plays with 11-year-olds. And, you know, I played baseball. And, and, and you know, he did have a talk to me. Uh, you know, he, he kind of sat me down at his game. Uh, and he said, you know, me and the fellas have been talking, Dad. And we really <laughs> want you to kind of cool out with your chatter uh, from the stands. And I feel like my chatter is great. Like, I feel like my chatter is amazing. What is your and chatter like, like? Well, my chatter is like, hey, what do you say, kid, one time? What do you say, kid? Think good thoughts up there. Get some, kid. And I feel like that's pretty good, right? <laughs> like that's pretty good baseball chatter, right? And like it's Bill's positive. like, it's me positive. and the guys have been talking, and you're really embarrassing me. And I'm like, my man, you were like walking around with poop in your pants just a few years ago. Like you can't be embarrassed. Like I can't embarrass you. And like he really hurt my feelings, man. And I stopped with the chat. But then I started talking to kids on his team, and no one had said that to him. That was his own thing that he came at me with, man. Wait, you went around and did and questioned <laughs> the children. You know what, man? You I did just, an investigation. I just didn't believe it. I I just couldn't buy it, man. My shatter is that good. So you spoke to each boy individually? <laughs> I sat him down. And you know said, I mean? you have a problem with my chatter? That's right, that's right. And then they said no, and you're like, OK, yeah. That's they, right. You assume they're telling the that's truth. Right. That's right, that's right, that's right. What happened that's to right. hey, batter, batter? People don't say that anymore. You know, and like nowadays, it's all these like sort of rhymes and, you know, you sports. It's, you know, the, the, the state of chatter is not good. Yeah, this is, well, yeah. you were there to revolutionize it, that's and you got saying. censored by I your did. son. I got censored by my son. Son, I got wow. by my son. So That's true. very sad. I'm yeah. very sorry to hear that. Yeah, the Bachelorette is tonight. How long yeah. have you been married? Oh, man, I've been married 11 years, man. Did you meet on a TV show? <laughs> Did you compete for your wife's love? or? No. Man, I'll tell you what. You know, my wife, we've been, we've been together for over 20 years now. And, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I look back at sort of my, my courtship of her. And you got to understand with my wife, she's Kurt Angle's niece, right? He's the gold medal champion. Oh, yeah, in wrestling. right. And a Won a gold yeah, medal, yeah, yeah. With, a, with a broken neck, WWE champion. So for me, I think, you know, being a young kid at that point when I met her, it was sort of all about proving myself. You know, I was plagued by, you know, the, the, the insecurities and ego of, of some, you know, young 20-year-old kids. And uh, so for me, you know, I just remember when I was courting her, it was all about these dates where I could sort of prove myself. And I remember I took her to Skyline Drive in Virginia to take her on a hike. And uh, I wanted to take her on the biggest, baddest hike there was to sort of prove myself. You know, as a fledging so, sort of wannabe theater actor, I wanted to show what I could do. Uh -huh. So I went to the park ranger there and I said, <laughs> hey, man, what's the hardest hike that you got here? And, you know, he said, well, you know, there's, uh, you know, dead man's walk or whatever. Like, you ain't getting off this path, you know, stroll, whatever it's called. And he said, but, you know, it's a 14-mile loop and being 104 degrees and at this time of day you can't make that and I said I'll do that one so I took her on the hike no water no flashlight no fire <laughs> was I'm the no, no water I, intentional no man I'm a city kid I just you know like Didn't I'm not Daniel of... Boone I just was like all right dude let's go and so I took her on the hike and I'll tell you Jimmy like first two hours it was money. I mean, like, we, we were sitting by a, a waterfall. We actually made out. Like, it, we were the only people on the hike because nobody else was stupid enough to be on it. And then we kept going. And about two more hours in, things just started getting a little quieter, started to get a little thirsty. And then four or five hours in, 
you could just start to feel the anger. You know what I mean? We just we stopped talking. And then once we got about six, seven hours in, you could see the tears in her eyes. You could start to feel the anger bubbling. And I'm like, man, I really, I really screw this one up. And again, man, I, you know, I, I'm no outdoorsman, but I saw this giant light in the sky called the sun. And I saw that sucker was going down. And I knew we still had a long way to go. And I was just like, not only will she not ever walk with me again, but we might never go anywhere again. This might be like, <laughs> we might never leave this path. So we kept going. Going, and I turned a corner, and again, uh, you know, I'm not the crocodile hunter, but I did see this pile of excrement, which was very, very big, and I knew that could not belong to a squirrel or a raccoon. It was just like, it was like prehistoric, like dinosaur size. And I saw it, and I was like, oh boy. And we kept walking, and I saw these two little things that looked like little baby gorillas ahead of us, and I took a little closer look, and there were these two little baby bears. And then from behind the tree came the mother bear. And it took about two aggressive steps towards us, then stood up on its, high, on, on its hind legs. And it was very big. And I looked at that bear, and I said, this is an opportunity. And I, I told this young woman, who now is my wife, I said, I, I just moved her to the side, and I stood right in front of that bear. And the thing was, I was afraid of that bear, but compared to the anger and hatred that I was feeling for this young, it was like nothing. I was like, come on, whatever you want to do, we'll do. And the thing is, is it took off in the same direction that we had to go. Oh, and my no. wife said, we got to turn around. I said, hey, baby, we ain't turning around because we got about 11 miles that way. And it's all like, this is the only way we're getting out of this. We got to follow the bear. So I started making noise, making noise. And we did make it out of it. So I did feel like a hero. And we did make it to my Jeep Wrangler with no top on it. <laughs> I got in the thing. And I felt like a hero at that point. I remember I turned the, 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 the key was in the ignition. I cranked it put on my Waylon Jennings, I was feeling like a hero, and I said, you just follow me, little lady, I got you. At that point, <laughs> the sky opened up, and it just started dumping down rain on us, and I had no roof in my damn Jeep. But you know what, my wife really figured out exactly who she was dealing with. And who was she up. dealing with? Man, look, man, I, a lot of spontaneity, uh -huh. you know what I mean? A, a risk taker, uh -huh. definitely throw myself in front of, you know, throw myself in front of danger. Uh -huh. But the thing is, the thing is, I will say, we did end up soaking wet, and bailing water out of my Jeep, but we did end up at a crackle, crackle barrel. And, and, and the thing about the cracker barrel, I didn't even say that right, the cracker barrel. The thing about the cracker barrel is everything, everything is good at a cracker barrel. I don't, <laughs> but it really, like everything just becomes all right at the cracker barrel. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, now that would be a hell of a TV show right oh there, yeah. Well, it's great to see you. You did a great job in the movie. King Richard is in theaters now. John Bernthal, everybody. <laughs> Michelle Young, The Bachelorette. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.